You're listening to Packers Talk Network. PackersTalk.com. You're listening to No Huddle Radio on the Packers Talk Radio Network, your home for in-depth and thoughtful Packers analysis. I'm your host, Gil Martin. My co-host is my good friend, Sean Tingen. In addition to this show, I write for Head TV and the Packers Post. Sean was a TV sportscaster in Minnesota. We're here to talk Packers because you're all here for one thing, and that's a love for Green Bay football. Sean, we are in July. I want to wish everyone a Happy and safe July 4th. Uh, but before we get started with Packers Talk, how about a little word from our sponsor? Hey, if you want to celebrate Independence Day, what better way before we get started uh, having a few words about our sponsor, Wisconsin's own Ticket King. For over 30 years, Ticket King has been providing Packers tickets to Packer fans. You can find them on the web at theticketking.com or visit their locations in Green Bay and Milwaukee. For direct links to specific Packers game tickets, Go to PackersTalk.com slash tickets or browse their website at TheTicketKing.com. Hey, and you can use those tickets possibly and maybe get some training camp tickets, maybe get some family night tickets, some preseason tickets. A lot of home games coming up this year for the Packers football season. Nine home games. A lot of opportunity to get some tickets from Ticket King. And I just can't wait for football to get here, Gil. We're we're in the, the slow part of the season. It helps that the Olympics are around the corner, but... I'm ready for football. I, I want football season back. I think I'm always ready for football. I mean, uh-huh. just, yeah. just bring it. But, yeah, looking forward to it. Look, we are uh, less than three weeks away from the start of training camp. Packers getting a, a little bit of an earlier start this year, and I can't wait. This is such anticipation for this season. Yeah, there really is. And we've been talking about the last few weeks, that you know, who we think – the best players are on both sides of the ball. We've been talking about the busy off season that they've had, but also kind of nice to have a quieter off season and not as much uh, chaos from a media perspective. You know, Aaron no Rodgers, drama. And, no drama, drama. Exa- exactly. Aaron Rodgers is, is on the East coast by you, Gil. Jordan Love is closer to me uh, here in Wisconsin. Uh, so it, it's nice to have that, but there's a lot to look forward to. And, uh, a thing that I'm looking forward to and that we're going to debate here on today's episode is who are the deepest and least pos- deepest position groups on this year's Packers team. Uh, Gil, you know, we're going to go top three and, and bottom three. For Packers position groups, Who's the? what do you think is the third most deepest position group on the Green Bay Packers right now as it stands going into 2024? Uh, I have to go with the defensive line, which is – Kind of surprising based on recent history, but I think when you combine the the move of the edge rushers to defensive end and you combine that with the young talent that they have at interior defensive line, I think this is a pretty solid, you know, deep group that, you know, they on the edge, they, they go like five deep, four deep for sure. And on the interior, you go about four or five deep with quality players. So I went with defensive line for my third deepest group. And defensive line is in my top three as well. Uh, they are a little higher on my list. And and you talk about that defensive line where there are just so many great pieces. You have uh, on the edges, you have Rashawn Gary, you have Preston Smith, Lucas Van Ness, uh, Kingsley Enoch Barre. You have a guy in Brenton Cox Jr. who's been working in the lab a little bit. Then on, uh, in the trenches at D-Tackle, Kenny Clark, wonderful player. Devontae White, up and comer. TJ Slayton, been okay. Shows flashes here and there. Carl Brooks, amazing rookie year for the limited time he had. Colby Wood, another promising young guy. And, and it says a lot about that defensive line group, Gil, where they didn't use any draft picks for defensive tackles or defensive ends. They only signed a few undrafted, and they signed uh, one undrafted rookie free agent, James Esther. And then they signed one defensive lineman uh, onto their 90-man roster after claiming him off the San Francisco 49ers. That's Spencer Waggy, And that just goes to show that it, they feel very good about that team. So I understand where we're both – we both have this defensive line group in the top three with good reason. Yeah, no. Uh, it, and, and if you would have asked me a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, this would have been on the other list most of, the, uh, of yeah. those years. But now I, I think that, you know, this group deserves to be on this list. So what was your third uh, ranked deepest position? 
Uh, my third ranked deepest position, it's uh, kind of surprising, but I put running back. I, I, I really do like the running back group, even though a lot of changes were made to this group in the offseason. Uh, I believe also for the better. Aaron Jones is out. Josh Jacobs, a younger runner, he's in. A.J. Dillon's still there, but his roster spot is far from guaranteed, which not really it's not really so much of a uh, that I'm neg- being negative towards A.J. Dillon or being critical of A.J. Dillon, but I think there's a lot more talent in that running back room that may make A.J. Dillon expendable come roster cutdown day. Uh, Emmanuel Wilson is a kid who showed a lot of flashes, who was really good in the preseason last year, and and a guy who – the Packers clearly feel highly about where they didn't feel safe leaving him on a practice squad. And they wanted him on that 53 man roster because they don't want him to go elsewhere and be a, a contributor elsewhere. And then Marshawn Lloyd, the third round pick out of Southern Cal, formerly also South Carolina, uh, a guy who seems to, he's going to bring a lot of different things to that running back room and make the Packers offense a little more diverse and a little more explosive uh, out of the backfield. Uh, so I think the running back group, that's a that's a pretty solid group where four guys who have shown flashes and done good things in, at the NFL level. Well, Marshawn Lloyd, not yet. He's not yet, right. Projected to do good things at the NFL level. But a lot of guys you feel pretty good about going into the 2024 season. Yeah, the running back was my number two. So uh, there you go. There, there you go. I mean, I, I, I just am excited about what Josh Jacobs can do, both as a runner and a receiver. I think A.J. Dillon, I I give him credit for this. He's betting on himself. He's Mm -hmm. putting everything on the line. He came into training camp or OTAs, at least, in in really good shape. Seems dedicated, seems ready to go. I'm excited about the potential of Marshawn Lloyd. A little concerned about the fumbling. I hope he can straighten that out. And he's got to learn to pass protect. But the potential is outstanding. And, you know, Emmanuel Wilson led the NFL in rushing during the preseason last year. Mm -hmm. And, okay, you take that with a grain of salt. He's playing at the end of games against guys who were either going to be on practice squads or out, you know, in the UFL or whatever. Uh, But he still looked very dynamic. And in his limited reps uh, during the regular season, he showed, you know, what did he He averaged better than five yards a carry. Mm-hmm. So yeah. uh, I am excited to see what this group can do. And, uh, you know, that's why it's my second spot as far as deepest positions go. And, and I was going to say with Emmanuel Wilson, where he did show flashes in the regular season last year, he dealt with, dealt with some injuries. That's probably that trans, it was probably a hard transition going from D2 to the NFL, where it's a lot more physical and, and just the injury bug really hit him good last year. But uh, you know, preseason, you can't just go based off that because down in Chicago, remember, Justin Fields was beating Toddy, the next king of the north, because he was slaying it against second and third team competition. And guess what? It, the preseason only tells so much. It, it it could show a lot of good things that a player could do. But uh, Emmanuel Wilson, I feel I feel really bullish about and, I, and clearly the Packers do, too. Uh, the rest of the guys in this group right now, as of today, Jarvian Howard, who is an undrafted rookie free agent and Ellis Merriweather. Uh, another camp body, uh, guys who it's kind of a, it's going to be an uphill battle for them to make this roster. But uh, looking forward to seeing how snaps get divvied up in uh, in the preseason, because honestly, outside of Marshawn Lloyd and Josh Jacobs, the final spot, final two spots possibly in that running back room on the roster, it's going to be up for grabs. No question. And it'll be interesting. I don't think we see a lot of Josh Jacobs in the preseason. No. I think he'll he'll get some token touches early on in, in maybe one or two games, but I'd be surprised if he's on the field for more than a series, uh, it, 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 at least in two of the three preseason games, and he may not play at all in the third. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. But uh, I am excited about this group. Where did you go with your number two? Uh, my number two was also defensive line. So and okay. we we had t- we had touched on that a little bit. And I, I just I, I love the group. And again, just alluding to before where Brian Gutekinds obviously loves this group too because he didn't feel like he needed to go in free agency to get a key contributor, a key addition to this group. He didn't use the draft. He he went into undrafted free agency to right. to find some rookies there. Uh, but it's just this group is pretty much set. And you have another guy too where you have a guy who essentially has been in the lab kind of like Brenton Cox Jr. on the edge where you've had a guy like Jonathan Ford, who was a seventh round pick a few years ago. And 
I don't know if he's going to make this roster. Uh, it's just, it doesn't seem like he's going to make it, but he's a big boy who could fill in at nose tackle. Maybe if he, his competition is TJ Slayton in camp, and maybe yep. that gets the best out of TJ Slayton. But uh, it's a very deep group that I think that you got to feel really good about if you're a Packer fan. Yeah, no, I'm very happy with it. And and like I said, for the first time in a long time, because how long has it been Kenny Clark and the question marks uh, at defensive mm-hmm. line? So happy to see that. And, and I think the transition to the four-man front has a lot to do with that because all of a sudden – uh, your, 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 you know, your edge rushers become linemen. And I think mm-hmm. that makes a big, big difference uh, in, in the way that the group is viewed. It's going to be a big year for this defensive line group and specifically defensive tackle where if Devontae Wyatt, Devontae Wyatt went from one and a half sacks as a rookie to five and a half last year. If he shows that he got stronger, if he can, if he can not have as many missed tackles and not slip off of running backs as often as he did a year ago, and show significant improvement in this game. If Carl Brooks builds off of that tremendous rookie year that he had in limited time, Colby Wooden added some weight in the offseason. If he he improves as a defensive tackle, Kenny Clark, this may be his last season coming up. And that's really, that'd be a really tough pill to swallow where it's funny, it's it's such a deep group, but in the end, it's a business. And the Packers feel good about guys, uh, other guys on this defensive tackle, in this defensive tackle room, that they're not paying as much as they would have to pay Kenny Clark. This could be Kenny Clark's last year. I, I hope he's not gone, but that's something that obviously where with great depth uh, comes possible uh, possible ramifications on the roster where Kenny Clark may go just because it's it's a depth thing where the Packers feel pretty good. He he'll want maybe he'll want a certain number. And the Packers are like, well, no, we're going to pay these guys less and get more out of it overall as a collective. Yeah, I mean, you got to pay Jordan Love, right? So all of a sudden, you know, if you're happy with the depth there, maybe you don't re-sign Kenny Clark. I would like to see him back, but not too many Packers get third contracts. So we shall see uh, whether Kenny Clark is one of the few. Yeah, it's a double-edged sword for sure. I I hope Kenny Clark's back for sure because he's clearly the best defensive tackle in this group. And we talked about it last week where – I think he's the second best defensive player on this entire team. I think he's one of the top five players on the entire team in general. Uh, But if he's gone, it's, it's says a lot about the depth in green Bay at that group. But uh, Gil, I'm going to let you reveal your number one because it's probably our number one. So I I was about to say, I don't think we're going to disagree on this to me. It's got to be wide receiver. A million percent. I'm, I'm with you. Just the depth is insane in this group. Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs, Jaden Reed, Dontavian Wicks, Bo Melton, Malik Heath, Samari Toure shown flashes in the NFL. Grant DeBose was a guy who the, the Packers were excited about getting late in the draft in 2023. Uh, it's just, it's such a deep group and so many guys who have been such huge contributors in such limited time in the NFL. Uh, what, nobody has more than three years of experience in this entire group in the NFL right. going into their third year? It's an yeah. awesome group. And I just, The Packers are in such great shape right here, and they're paying these guys pennies for now. It's going to be an expensive room soon, but right now, enjoy it while you have it. You know, it's interesting. One of the things I really love about this group, they come across as so unselfish. Mm -hmm. There's only one ball to go around, and, you know, so many wide receivers get reputations as divas. Give me the ball. I'm always open. You got to throw me the ball more. They pout if they don't get the ball. These guys just seem to be helping each other, working together. Whoever gets open is going to get the ball. You know, No one is the clear-cut designated number one. And some people criticize that, but I think there's a benefit to not having a clear-cut number one receiver because defensive coordinators can't put all their eggs in one basket. It's not mm-hmm. like we know if we stop Devontae Adams, nobody else is, is quite able to beat us the same way. Well – Pick your poison right now because the Packers can go five, six deep and and really put out guys on the field who can get the job done and then some. Uh, you mentioned the future with this group. It's going to cost a lot more. In the next two years, you know, we're going to start losing some of these guys because we won't be able to afford mm-hmm. them all. But that also creates – hopefully a healthy competition between these guys to make good. If you look at the tape, you talk about the unselfishness of this group. Watch the tape. 
the way these guys block their butts off on the edges, the way these guys block their butts off for their teammates, the way they celebrate, and they're happy. They seem like they celebrate more when their teammate makes a play than when they make a play. That says everything about this group. There is no ego. Everybody just is on the same page. Everyone is it just, they just want to win. They just want to win. And if their teammate is helping them win more than them, it makes them even more satisfied where it's just, and it's funny because this group hasn't been completely healthy for the most part. And I'm mostly talking about Christian Watson, where this guy's led the Packers in touchdowns receiving, receiving touchdowns the last two years. And he's played 17 total games. That guy's on the season for a full year or on, on, on the team for a full season and plays every single game. This offense went from zero to it goes from zero to one hundred. It really does, and and this offense is still really good. Romeo Dobbs is really really good in the red zone. Jaden Reed, you, you you saw what Jaden Reed did as a rookie. The guy set rookie franchise records, uh, beating Sterling, yeah. you know, beating out Sterling Sharp, a, a guy who obviously should be in the Hall of Fame and, and was a terrific receiver in his time in Green Bay. Dontavian Wicks, we've talked about. He looks like baby Devontae Adams. Bo Melton is a wonderful surprise and a guy we both have just talked about how much we love Bo Melton, and he's got a future in Green Bay. Malik Keith was catching hospital balls everywhere in the preseason last year. He's awesome. It's just, and, and that's six names right there. There's only one ball, but these guys don't care. They just they just want to win. And when they get the opportunity, they shine. Yeah. And you know, the one thing I love about Jaden Reed last year, he led the team in catches. He led the team in yards. I believe he tied for the team lead in touchdown receptions. Mm -hmm. And he only played 56% of the offensive snaps, yep. which is insane. Uh, there are a bunch of guys on this roster right now, I think, who have the potential to be a number one receiver. But from pure athletic ability, size, speed, you put it all together. I think Christian Watson is the top candidate. Again, the biggest thing for him. Two things. Number one, as you said, staying healthy. And number two, just being a little more consistent. This Packer receiver group has also been getting a lot of love from uh, a lot of people outside of the organization, just uh, casual observers or guys who used to play. Most notably, Chad Ochocinco is a guy who's been all over social media talking about don't sleep on this group. Don't sleep on these guys. This group is just insane as a whole. And it's just kind of a it's just been a quiet monster that hasn't quite woken up yet. And they're on on the precipice of doing some great things. It's an exciting, exciting group. Uh, but again, I mentioned guys like Samari Toure, Grant DuBose, uh, Alex Magooch. Uh, he uh, switched positions from quarterback to wide receiver. Uh, they signed a couple of rookies out of rookie minicamp and Julian Hicks and Dimitri Stanley. All those guys have significant mountains to climb. And who knows, maybe they latch onto a roster elsewhere and contribute elsewhere. It's maybe not to no fault their own. They make the Packers, they don't make the Packers roster. It's just, it's a really deep receiver group. So yeah. it's going to, it, it's just a fun group. I, I'm interested to see how, uh, how much they all play in the preseason. I, I would wrap up Christian Watson with bubble wrap. In my opinion, don't, don't <laughs> yes. let that guy, don't let that guy get on the field until week one in Brazil. Uh, that's just my personal opinion, but it's just an exciting group. And Jordan Love, obviously he, he he's got to be motivated to sign that contract with the guys he gets to throw to. Oh yeah. Uh, and that we didn't even mention the tight ends, which probably would have been my fourth biggest yeah. group but uh yeah I, I i mean and and you know some of those guys that you mentioned as long shots they could be the next Bo melt normally keith the guy mm -hmm. who starts off on the packers practice squad and then goes you know and and when injuries hit they get a chance they take advantage of it yep. and then you're talking about them as one of the next players who could have an impact i mean it's it's amazing the way brian gutekinds has picked up players undrafted free agents, late mm -hmm. round, mid round, and really had success there. Former Packers head coach Mike McCarthy said the NFL is a two-way street. It's a, it's a two-way street for so many guys where if it doesn't work in place A, it may work in place B. So that, that could very well be the case with a lot of these receivers buried on the depth chart in Green Bay. Now the bottom three, the shallowest position group skill, uh, who's number three for third most shallow, third least deep group? in your opinion, on the Green Bay Packers right now? I had to go with cornerback. And okay. it, it, to me, it's not so much that there isn't talent here. It's just that all the talent has a lot of question marks next mm -hmm. to it. Uh, even Jair Alexander, who is clearly the number one corner. He only played seven games last year. Mm -hmm. He was suspended for conduct detrimental to the team for one game. 
He seems to be on the right page right now, seems to be dedicated, showed up for voluntary OTAs. Heck, they even send him home for mandatory minicamp because yeah. he had done so much. But he's got to stay healthy. He's got to have his head in the right place. And he's got to return to form. I'm, I'm fairly confident he can, but I don't know. And then opposite him, you have a choice of a first-round pick who has played about, what, 10 games over the last two years combined yeah. Yeah. and is coming back from some significant injuries, and a seventh-round pick who looked really good last year in Carrington Valentine, but, mm -hmm. you know, was he a flash in the pan? Or is he somebody who can really be a legitimate starter? I think you add Keyshawn Nixon, who was up and down in the slot. I mean, I like... Corey Ballantyne is a depth guy, but do I want him starting? Uh, I mean, there's talent here, but there's a lot of question marks around most of that talent, and that's why I put them third. And they were just on the outside of my bottom three. And, but the thing is, I think there's more sure things there than my third group, which is offensive line, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. with, with the offensive line, you know what you got in Elton Jenkins. You know what you have in Zach Tom. Outside of that, it's kind of a crapshoot. Rasheed Walker, maybe the, the third best offensive lineman in this team because of how well he played in the second half of last year. But we got to see it consistently. Zach Tom was great his entire second year. Elton Jenkins has been great for a long time. But Rasheed Walker, he had a he struggled a little bit. He had his struggles in the first half of last year, got benched against the Rams. Then his play was significantly better after that and, and throughout the remainder of the year. Uh, and then you have guys like Josh Myers, who's been super up and down, and he's playing for a new contract this after this year. Sean Ryan, who has shown really good things as a run blocker, but pass pro, he's been exposed. Jordan Morgan, yeah, you used a first-round pick on him. You hope he plays at around one level, but there's going to be some rookie growing pains, as as there are with any, with any rookie. Uh, Jacob Monk was a, a fifth-round pick, a guy who really had some good moments at Duke, uh, was overshadowed by – Graham Barton, who was a first-round pick right after Jordan Morgan in the 2024 draft. Uh, Royce Newman, if he makes this roster, I think that says a lot about the uncertainty along the offensive line. And then uh, Andre Dillard was a former first-round pick that they brought in as a cheap free agent who struggled quite a bit in Tennessee last year. And hes I feel like he's a camp body, and he's someone where if they don't feel good about the young guys, he may make the roster out of necessity. So this group is a little thinner than – that you like, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, that was my fourth group, basically. Yeah. I, I mean, I see the numbers there, and I guess I'm a little bit more encouraged. But I, the thing that I think, for me, made it fourth rather than third is the versatility of so many yeah. of these guys, so that if someone gets injured, if someone doesn't play well, you don't want to juggle because continuity is important on the offensive mm -hmm. line. But you've got at least – three guys, and if you count Josh Myers as a guard possibility, four, mm -hmm. who can really play multiple positions. And I think that that's why I had it fourth rather than third, but it was it was close. And yeah. it, it is a concern for sure that they find the right five as quickly as possible and that they perform well because is there anything more important than keeping Jordan Love upright and able to actually mm -hmm. make the plays that he made in the second half of last year. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. And you got to be, the big thing is you got to be able to protect Jordan love. That guy's yeah. about to make 50, 55, maybe 60 million a year coming up soon. You better damn well protect him. Uh, the guy I'm going to have my eye on mostly though, in the preseason and training camp is going to be Jordan Morgan. If yep. Jordan Morgan, if he looks good in preseason, he's going to be a day one starter. In my opinion, he's going to be starting in Sao Paulo, Brazil, uh, against a good Philadelphia Eagles defensive front. But oh, he where? may be a guy. Yeah, exactly. And he may be a guy, though, that you just have to throw in the fire if if need be. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, Gil, who's number two on your list? And uh, second least deep, second most uh, second most shallow, essentially, uh, for position groups. Yeah, I, I went with safety for okay. my second group. I, I mean, Xavier McKinney, sure thing. After that, mm -hmm. lots of questions. And, you know, I, I mean, I like Javon Bullard, but got to see what he can actually do mm -hmm. in the NFL. Uh, is he better suited for slot or safety? I get the feeling he's going to play both at different times over the course of the year. I, I like what we got from Anthony Johnson Jr. in limited reps, mm -hmm. but how big of a role is he ready to play? 
-hmm. if he's your starter, is that a problem? Uh, and, and if Xavier McKinney, God forbid, gets hurt, boy, would this group yeah. look very, very yeah. shallow. So to me, I, I placed that second. Again, I'm not saying there's no talent here, but there's a lot of – instead of shallow, it's almost like the most questions, you know, yeah. coming into the season because there is talent at all of these positions. It's just that we don't know – we don't have as much certainty about it. And again, to me, if McKinney gets hurt, oh, boy. The safety room is looking very, very different. Yeah, I did not have safety group at number two. I had them at number one, spoiler okay. alert. But number two on my list was inside linebacker. And there you go. the big thing is, is because why, why, this is like splitting hairs between, for me, this is like splitting hairs between the inside linebacker, the inside linebackers and uh, the safety group is like splitting hairs. And the big thing was that inside linebacker, Quay Walker and Isaiah McDuffie, uh, these guys, I feel if these guys are the day one starters, I don't feel great about it, but I feel better about it than I would at safety with whoever's going to be starting next to Xavier McKinney at safety right. because there are so many unknowns at safety right now. With inside linebacker, though, you, you draft a guy in the second round, an Edrin Cooper, who sounds like he's fitting right in and getting and things are clicking really quickly for him uh, in limited time and limited practice time. You draft Tyron Hopper in the third round out of Mizzou. But then outside of that, you have Eric Wilson and Christian Welch, who are primarily special teamers. Raylan Goforth, who was an undrafted rookie free agent. Christian Young, a new addition, who is just kind of a roster hopeful and maybe a camp body. Uh, the number, they're number two. They're just ahead of uh, – they're just behind offensive line. I think offensive line is a little deeper. But inside linebacker, outside of Quay and Isaiah McDuffie, it, it could get pretty hairy pretty quickly. Uh, but they're number two on my list. And that segues, though, into number one, the safety group. Xavier McKinney, like you said, Gil, he's a sure thing. But outside of that, you have an exciting rookie in Javon Bullard. You have another guy in uh, Evan Williams, who's picked fourth round out of Oregon, who could do some good things. Keaton Oladapo from Oregon State. There's It seems like good value in round five there. Anthony Johnson Jr. showed flashes, but I don't know if he's your consistent every every game starter at the opposite safety position opposite of Xavier McKinney. Uh, so that's why they're number one and inside linebackers number two for me. I'm assuming inside linebackers number one for you. Yeah, it, it is there you go. at this point. So, I mean, uh, again, I think a lot of it is going to depend on how quickly Adrian Cooper gets up to speed and is ready yeah. to play. And I think, you know, the thing about Quay Walker, he's, functional but he's not making big plays enough yet he had the big pick six in week one against Chicago yep. and then not enough big plays at least for a former first round pick and yeah. you know to me if you get Cooper and Quay on the field together that's a lot of speed mm -hmm. at that position but you also need you know to be able to read plays and have that awareness and anticipate where to go uh you know, to me, it was close between inside linebacker and safety, but just the, the you know, uh, to me, Isaiah McDuffie is a great backup and a really mm -hmm. good special teams player, but do I want him on the field for 70% of snaps or more? Uh, if I have to, I could live with it, but it doesn't make me do cartwheels of joy. And again, I'd love for him to prove me wrong. Yeah. I'd love for him to go out there and ball out and, uh, you know, show that he's, worthy of starting full-time but there's just a lot of question marks there you're counting on a rookie even the depth you're counting on a couple of rookies it it, it, it just and then isaiah mcduffie who has sort of been you know at the depth there is like you said mostly special teams guys and rookies uh, yeah wilson and welch uh guys who are very good special teams players Wilson, I, I feel a little better in an emergency if you put him out on the field for a few mm -hmm. series. But again, not a guy I want playing 75, 80 percent of snaps. So it was close. But I went uh, from three to one cornerback safety linebacker. It's uh, yeah, it like splitting hairs. I mean, we're thinking yeah. around along the same wavelength and everything like that. It's just, you know, it's just kind of nickel and diamond uh, throughout this. Essentially, that's what we're doing. We're just nitpicking right now. But yeah. Uh, I, I think the big thing with Quay Walker, I think he real, and I've said it before, I think he's in, in store for a big year because the guy has potential to make big plays. I think the scheme he was a part of the first two years in the league held him back. And I, I think Jeff, I think Jeff Halfley is going to let him loose. I think he's going to be all over the field coming up in year three. 
Uh, he's put up, he's done his job for the minimum in his first yeah. two years in the NFL. Uh, he's got, he got better as an NFL player in year two compared to his rookie year. He cooled down, his jets cooled down a little bit. Uh, you know, he took up meditation and he, he matured as a player too. Now it's just about getting better. And I think Jeff Halfley, he's the right D coordinator. He's going to push the right buttons for a guy like Quay Walker who needs to be aggressive. And that's, that's the style of play that I think you're going to see him just cut loose a little more. Uh, so there you go. There you have it. We, Gil, you and I essentially think of the same thing with uh, the depth of the position groups, uh, who are the deepest groups, who are the shallowest position groups. Training camp and preseason can't come soon enough so then we could settle these debates uh, finally and then and then the regular season. Can't wait for it coming up. But, uh, Gil, before we wrap up uh, this episode of No Huddle, uh, what articles are online for the Packers Post, she said TV? What do you got going on during a slow time in the NFL offseason? It's never slow for you, though. Uh, what do you have online? Well, for the Packers post, I did these the discussion we had today. Deepest position, one to three. Least deep position, one to three. So uh, I did talk about that. Still working on some things for Cheesehead. Haven't decided what my article is going to be, but it'll be up on Thursday. All right. Sounds good. We uh, we we are in anticipation, waiting for the Cheesehead TV article. Uh, Gil, you ready for some trivia? Yes, sir. Let's do it. Well, the 2024 Olympic Games in Paris, France are right around the corner. There have been some notable NFL players to participate in the Olympics, such as Hall of Famers Jim Thorpe, Ollie Madsen, and Bob Hayes. And there was one former Olympian who played for the Green Bay Packers briefly in the 1970s. Gil, do you have any idea who this player is? Can you name this player? <coughs> wow. Because really? I, had to, I had to look this up, and I had never heard of him either. He played on, on the offensive side of the football for the Packers. Oh, wow. Uh, ha, 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 ha. In the early 70s, I'm going to guess. The mid-70s. The mid-70s. And he was a wide receiver. Yeah. I was uh, not around then. My parents had didn't even meet yet. So <laughs> I, 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 legit, I legit was stunned by this, too. I, I had no idea. If you uh, have to pass on it, no worries. But, hey, I get it because I had to look this up, too. All right, I'm gonna. I am going to take a little look here. Yeah, please, please. Yeah, you use 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 the internet. If no, need, no, 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 no. I'm thinking here. Uh, <laughs> I am thinking. I am not going to use the internet. Let's please, please do, please do, because it's really a difficult. I never heard of this guy. Uh, all right. You're going to tell me he didn't even play a full season with the Packers. Played six total games. Okay. I'm going to say it's from Bart Starr's first year as coach, which would be 1975. And I'm going to guess it's Gerard Tinker. It's Gerald Tinker. Gerald yeah. Tinker. Okay, Gerald Tinker. That, that is a heck of a pull. I have never heard of this guy. Tinker was a sprinter in the 1972 Olympic Games in Munich. He was a member of the gold medal winning 4 by 100 meter relay team. And this is before he was drafted in the second round of the NFL draft by the Atlanta Falcons as a wide receiver out of Kent State University. Tinker played six games for the Green Bay Packers in 1975. He caught four passes for 84 yards, scored one touchdown in his entire Packers career. It was short. It was sweet. But, hey, the guy was an Olympic gold medalist. So just playing in the NFL was just kind of like, eh, whatever. Let's see how this works out. <laughs> yeah, no, he uh, didn't have a, a lengthy – NFL career, but you know, how many guys who were sprinters did NFL teams try to make into receivers over the years? Al Davis, that was his, uh, that, that was his dream every year. Hey, yeah, it seems the, that way. Who, ran, who ran the fastest 40? He's our pick. He's sign our him. guy. That's, Ronaldo but, Nehemiah, look, sign him. That's a... Gil, I feel like we should race one day just for the Olympics and then people could see it on YouTube. And I'm just encouraging folks, if you want to see that, if you want to see us possibly do any physical activity, I highly recommend you don't want to see that. It'd be really ugly to see an action. But subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us. Subscribe to Packers Talk Network. We're everywhere. We're on Spotify. We're on iHeartRadio. We're on all that stuff. But follow us on YouTube if you want to get a look at our ugly mugs and possibly do physical activity by request only. We're not going to do that just on our own ambition and own accord. That's very true. We are not no. going to do that on our own. Gil, send us out before. Send us out before I talk myself into into trying to bench press on air or something. All right. Well, that's it for today. We'll be right back here next week. Follow us on Twitter at Gil Packers and at GB Packer Sean to stay up to date on all things Packers or to ask us questions. Or 
You can email us at gbpackershawn at gmail.com. Make sure you subscribe to Packers Talk on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Big thanks to PackersTalk.com for powering our show. Thank you for listening. Until next time, Go Pack Go! Go Pack Go! Go Pack Go!